Uh, yeah, so uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, installing uh, Jiffy DOS and Dolphin DOS on the Ultimate 64. So what you're seeing now, the screen that you're seeing, is the HDMI output of my Ultimate 64 running um, the basic kernel and the basic, um, basic ROM, if you know what I mean. Now, when I got my 1541 disk drive, I thought it was the best thing that ever was. Uh, I came from loading tapes and on the Commodore 64, which was slow, which was a lot of recording numbers of where the games began on the tape and a lot of rewinding and forward winding and all that. So when the disk drive came out, I was uh, very, very happy with the fact that I could just load anything that was anywhere on the disk. Uh, it was fast, at least in my view, it was faster than tape, and that was fast enough. Now, at that time, I didn't know anything about uh, Jiffy DOS or, um, or Dolphin DOS. I had never heard of anything like that. I wasn't very inclined to open my... I never opened my own Commodore 64, so... And I wasn't going to open one, and I wasn't going to open my disk drive either. So I did know about turbo loaders on tape, but I, I never expected uh, any to be available on the 1541 drives. Now, much, much later, I discovered that there were upgrade kits. For some reason, Commodore, in their own uh, magnificent style, uh, made a mistake in the design of their computer and the serial interface, and they had a heritage of the of the the disk drives that they had, of course, uh, already designed for earlier models, and now they had a chance to do something right. One of the designers made the right choice. The original disk drive was going to be fast, um, but of course there were cost cutting exercises and things were cut. Uh, mistakes were made. I don't know the exact cause, but we ended up with a very slow drive. Um, well, or rather, I have to say, we ended up with a drive that could have been a lot faster. Now, other people were smart enough to uh, think of a solution. And there were many others. The ones that I'm going to talk about now are Jiffy DOS and Dolphin DOS. Um, and they consisted of hardware. Uh, one uh, piece of the hardware went into the Commodore itself, into the, the Commodore 64. Uh, the other piece went into the disk drive. This was true for both uh, set of, for both Jiffy DOS and Dolphin DOS. So if you got Jiffy DOS or Dolphin DOS, you had to open up your Commodore and do some soldering and install stuff. And then together, they would operate uh, at a much faster pace. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is that if you want to install these um, uh, these speed loaders today in the Ultimate 64, there are capabilities uh, for for doing that within the the, the Ultimate 64, um, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you kind of have to know a little bit about uh, what it used to look like when you bought these things uh, back in the '80s and the, in the '90s. I'm going to be showing um, a couple of things. I'm going to I'm going to load a game. In this case, I'm going to try uh, Frantic Freddy. We're going to load it in so that you can see the the speed difference. Then we're going to install uh, Dolphin DOS. I'm going to show you how that works, and uh, if you see how that works, you'll know how to install Jiffy DOS as well. Uh, and then we're going to see the speed difference in loading the same game, but it's going to be much quicker, of course. So uh, let's just first start by loading Frantic Freddy on the, on the Ultimate. Frantic Freddy, uh, this is a, a, a D64 image. Of course, we're going to be concentrating on loading uh, image files. Uh, you have to see this as uh, emulating a computer and emulating uh, a disk drive. Uh, so um, 
DMA loading PRG files is always going to be faster than this, but we're concentrating on loading files off disk. So I'm going to simply mount this. So if I whoop, load the directory of this disk now, you're going to see that it's got Frantic Freddy. It's 140 blocks. So I'm going to load this game in, comma 8, comma 1, and we're going to time it. So here we go. So yeah, uh, it really took all that time. So we're gonna we're gonna run it. You know, we wait, waited all that time. Let's uh, let's see how the German cracking service was it made there. Uh, <laughs> even back then, I thought this was a pretty cheap intro <laughs> compared to everything else that I'd seen. German cracking service. That's it, and they make you wait. You can press any button you like, but they make you wait. Come on. There we go. And that's the game. Uh, I used to play this game for the music. I thought the music was good. And it's not even the best Sid music out there, but I thought it was... And I'm dead. Okay, so we're, we're not here to play the game, but... Uh, that's Frantic Freddy, and... Um, I'm going to now show you how the installation of uh, Jiffy DOS goes. Now, let's get to uh, installing some stuff. Um, first of all, you have to download some files. I'll put some links in the description. Uh, you can either uh, download Jiffy DOS or Dolphin DOS, or you can um, download both. In the Ultimate 64, you can install several um, kernels, and you can switch between them. So I'll I'll show you the installation uh, of Dolphin DOS, and along the way, I'll I'll explain something about installing Jiffy DOS. They're mostly the same. Dolphin DOS has a little bit more uh, settings to do. Um, Jiffy DOS is still a product that is being sold, so I will include a link to the website where you can purchase them, or if you already have the ROM files, and you can just use those. Dolphin DOS, uh, as far as I know, is abandonware, and you can just uh, download it, but you have to uh, take something into account because there are several versions. Dolphin DOS, um, uh, it had a version 1, a few hundred sets were made and sold, uh, but they are very hard to find. Uh, most of the people uh, know and have used Dolphin DOS 2, which we'll be using uh, in this video as well. Uh, there is a Dolphin DOS 3, as far as I know. It does not work on the Ultima 64, um, at least not uh, by the time that I'm making this video. So maybe uh, later versions will use them. Now, uh, Dolphin DOS has had a number of official and unofficial releases. Uh, we'll be getting into that as well. Um, but let's uh, get into installing um, uh, the ROMs. So uh, we go into the menu. Now, installing the ROMs is much like installing firmware for the Ultimate 64 itself. You have to put the files on a USB uh, thumb drive and put it in your Ultimate and then go to the file browser and uh, uh, click on the files there or, or press enter on the files there. So I have a little folder called ROMs, Dolphin DOS and Jiffy DOS. Uh, we'll go to uh, Dolphin DOS here. Now you'll see two files. Uh, this is the ROM file that um, uh, went into the uh, drive. And this is the ROM file that went into the Commodore 64 computer. Now these were chips, of course. Now they're software. Um, I'll start with the, with the kernel ROM. All I have to do is select it and press return. Um, the Ultimate 64 application checks the file size and then uh, gives me a number of options. I'm going to flash this as an alternate kernel 2. I have um, 
space for four kernels, an original and three alternates. I'm going to use uh, alternate kernel three. Um, I can also choose basic ROM here, but we don't have a basic ROM, so it'll it'll give me uh, a hint um, if I pick the wrong one. But I'm going to flash this as alternate kernel three. Now, watch what happens. If I press enter, it's going to say system ROM flashed. So it's now stored in, in my Commodore, in my Ultimate 64. If I turn my computer off and on again, it will still be there. Uh, it is not selected though. It's just there, right? It's, it's stored. Now I have to do the same for the drive ROM. So if I press enter and note that I have Dolphin DOS 2 uh, dash 6 here. And I'm going to get back to that a little later. Uh, I press enter on this one. I get a different menu. I'm going to use this. Again, I have a, a number of options here. I'm going to use this as drive ROM 3. So I press enter, but watch what happens. Right, I get a different message. I get, please select custom 1541 ROM 3. Um, you could interpret this as a message saying, hey, uh, you didn't select the correct ROM, which is what I thought, but that's not true. All is, what happened is that I didn't get a message saying that the ROM was flashed. It has flashed, but it's reminding me to select the ROM uh, inside the drive. Now I'll show you what that means because this is all uh, expected behavior. This is all correct behavior. So um, I press OK and now I go back to the settings uh, of the ultimate. Uh, the first thing that I want to do uh, is to um, make sure that I have no cartridge. So the first line, if I press enter here, I can emulate a number of cartridges, but I'm going to say none. Um, and here I can choose an alternate kernel. So I'm going to press enter and we're going to press alternate kernel three. Now this is the same for uh, Dolphin DOS as it is for Jiffy DOS. So whatever kernel I selected, I have to select it here. So if I rebooted my computer now, I would have a different kernel. Um, now, we go back to the settings, and I'm going to go to my drive settings. Now, there's a couple of options here, again, that we have to look at. This is the ROM select. So this is where I uh, select custom ROM 3, and this is uh, what the, uh, the user interface reminded me of to select the custom ROM. So this is now me installing Dolphin DOS on the 1541. Uh, for Jiffy DOS, again, this is the same. But this is also where Jiffy DOS and Dolphin DOS uh, part ways because if I installed Dolphin DOS in my 1541 drive, I also installed some RAM memory. Now, specifically, I installed 8K of RAM starting at location uh, 8000. If I press enter here, I get a couple of options. Um, now, the first uh, thought you might have is, hey, I can stall 16K at 8,000 and it will work. But sadly, it won't. Now, for whatever reason, um, uh, this doesn't work. It doesn't work in this version of the Ultimate 64 firmware, the version 1.18, which you can see at the top of the screen. An alternate, unofficial uh, Dolphin DOS version was released, uh, moving uh, the 8K of RAM to uh, hex 6000. And this is the version that I've installed. If you remember when we were selecting uh, the ROMs for the for the for the kernels, uh, there was a uh, for the 1541 there was a dash six. Now this dash six version means that it's uh, release number six, which is an unofficial release, which has moved the RAM memory to 6,000. So in this list, uh, the first one, uh, or the one that I have selected now, uh, won't work because that does not install any memory at 6,000. The second option will. The third option will as well, and the fourth option won't. 
Uh, so we can't use that. We can use this one, and we also can use the last one. So uh, depending on which version of Dolphin DOS you have installed, this may or may not lead to success. So uh, be careful and select uh, the release 6 version, and then go and select a piece of memory, RAM memory, that at least covers 6,000 and then uh, 8K of that. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to select this one. Um, and if we're going to be on the, if we want to be on the safe side, oh, this is going to be the same. We can use this. This is going to select an even larger chunk of memory, but I, I know this to work. So I'm going to select that one. Now there is uh, one more thing that if you install Dolphin DOS, uh, there was a cable uh, you, there was a cable between the user port and the disk drive. Now, the Ultimate 64 has a special setting which allows me to enable the Speed DOS parallel cable. Um, Dolphin DOS was smart enough, uh, Speed DOS was a, was a different speed loader, and Dolphin DOS was smart enough to use the cable that's that was used for Speed DOS for their own speed loader. So I can enable the use of this cable which uh, will basically just emulate the existence of this cable. So um, we, we've done everything now. So we've, we've gone here. I'm going to just run through them again. I've, I've done the, the, the parallel cable. Um, I've selected cartridge none. I have an alternate kernel installed here. Um, and in my 1541, I have my custom ROM and I have my, my RAM installed. This is all for Dolphin DOS. Now I'm going to reboot my Commodore 64. And as we can see, there's now Dolphin DOS installed on the computer. Um, but the ultimate test, of course, is loading a uh, Frantic Freddy. Now if if I'm going to, oh, I don't have uh, the disk installed now, so I'm going to go back, uh, go to the top, Frantic Freddy, that's it. So I'm going to mount it. Okay, that's the directory. Uh, I'm going to load this. Uh, wait a minute, I can just do that like that. And that's it. It's already loaded. So that is an amazing speed difference. It's a matter of seconds uh, until it's loaded. And that is much, much faster than the original disk. It's also uh, faster than uh, Jiffy DOS. Um, and it's definitely, when you're loading disk files or files off uh, a D64 image, then this is definitely going to make life a lot easier. So I'm going to thank you for watching. Um, I hope you found this useful, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.